look back over your life. And all that the Lord has brought you through. You can say now. Those areas 
are the nesting places where the wizards of the clan move from Ohio mm -hmm. down there. Amen. Amen. And they have not only them, those bikers. Hmm. And that is a sanctuary city for them, meaning they can do what they want to whoever they want to do it to. Amen. Amen. And they ain't going to do it to their own people. They ain't going to do it to people like us. Amen. So you ain't going to hear about me down there in La Mesa hmm. just because they got a nice shopping mall and they got a, a big sale going on. I don't care if they're giving it away. I'm not going to be in La Mesa, California. Yeah. Not down there knowing that I'm putting my life in jeopardy. Yeah. Mm. Right. Mm. Some of this stuff we got to be, we have to be use more wisdom. Yes. Yes. Understanding that this is a very volatile time that we live in. They don't like us. Amen. Amen. They do not like us. Now the situation that happened over there, the Grove, started out with Black Lives Matter. Mm. And I was told because this is always something they never show. They never show this. One of our uh, members is a labor uh, union rep. She's been over, she just, she just was here uh, when, uh, Monday serving food. She flew out to Minneapolis to be in that situation and flew back and was in the march yesterday, the protest yesterday, and wound up having a, a, a gun put in her face by the police. Yeah. While she and the group were trying to leave. Yeah. They weren't marching, they were trying to leave. Mm. This is what they don't show you. Yeah. And while trying to leave, the police cornered them off and would not allow them to leave peacefully. Wow. And then turned around they had to run literally for their lives down the alleyway, blocks away from their cars, just to leave peacefully. So when all of that stuff broke out, it was not Black Lives Matter, it was not the protesters, it was those rogue police officers inciting and pushing the started of they pushed this white guy down to the ground with a baton. Wow. Mm. They will show you that. Mm. And that's when everything erupted. Mm. We're living in some very dangerous times. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You, 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 you can sit around here and got your little 401k or whatever you got to think that everything is all right. It's not. This is a very, very bother. Don't you see every week yes, yes. there's something going on? Yes, every week. The last, since this pandemic, they've shown it, but it's been going on for a long time. Amen. Killing Amen. us. Amen. There's just certain things that don't make the news. Yeah. But they've been killing us. What they did with that young man, Mr. Floyd, George Floyd, was nothing more than a public lynching. Amen. All that was. Yeah. And, and, and for you to sit back and think that it wasn't, if you put your weight of your body yeah. on your the knees on somebody's neck yeah. for nine minutes and the man can't yeah. breathe, he yeah. was already unconscious for three minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The man was calling for his mama who yeah. was dead. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And then said, Tell my children. Mm -hmm. I love him. Mm. Wow. He knew that that man was intending to kill him. Yes, wow. yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And don't be deceived and don't get caught up uh, uh, with the wife divorcing him because that could be just a ploy to, to, to cover up some money. And, and, and when he gets through, she going to still have money. And when he get out, because right now, how in the world are you going to get that man third degree murder? Amen. Amen. First degree. Mm. And he killed that man right there for the world to see. Yeah. You're talking about yeah. third degree, which yeah. means that he could possibly do and don't do. All these laws that are made to protect them, yeah. but don't do nothing for us. Yeah. We got we got we, we, we gotta wake up.
these laws have never been constructed for us. The Constitution ain't even for us. Amen. 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 Yeah, justice for all in one nation under God. What God are they talking about? Amen. Amen. Show me the God that I know. Amen. Hallelujah. So we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, as we rejoice and as we're praising God, God to have our minds and our eyes and our ears wide open. Amen. They're killing us. They're killing yes. us. Yes. And getting away with it. Amen. Amen. Killing us and getting away with it. And, 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 and the, 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 I, I, I kind of went to bed last night almost with a headache because one of the last things that I read was the uh, report from Georgia from the man that was killed jogging. Amen. And the, uh, uh, the, the district attorney said it was justifiable. It was justifiable. Mm -hmm. That man wasn't bothering nobody. It was, he was, he looked like now I'm looking at us all in here right now. All of us black. Don't none of us look alike. Hallelujah. All black folk look alike. That's the biggest lie from the pit. We got all kind of colors yeah. and shades and grades. Yeah. So how? So you gonna come in here and just shoot anybody random to he look like? Yeah, right. And they getting away with. It. Amen, amen. He look like. Yeah. It's more white folk look like them because it's more yeah, them yeah. than it is of us. Hey Amen. I'm through. Uh, look, I had I had to let you know it, 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 it's it's very very serious. They they want everybody to be sympathetic. Mm -hmm. What's going on in Beverly Hills and and up there and and, and Lurchmont and up there at the Grove? Don't you know most of them stores don't even want us in there? Amen. Hey, hey, uh -huh. Going on Rodale Drive when you go in there, they they want to stop you and look at you yeah, real funny, yeah, yeah. and they want to follow you around yeah, the store. Yeah. And, yeah. and look at you. Yeah. That scene in Boomerang is, is very true. When when they going in the store and Martin Lawrence said, "I want to get this coat," and man rushes up, said, "That coat is eighteen hundred dollars." <laughs> look at him, and he said, "Okay, uh, there's no return policy. Like he go take it and, and stink it up, yeah. and then bring it back Monday yeah. and say, I want my money back.' The folk that do that most are white folks." Oh, yeah. They're the ones that go and wear it one time, turn the tag inside out, Amen. and don't take the sales tag out, and then bring it back that Monday. Yeah, And they gladly take it back. Don't say that if you or me go there, oh no, all sales are final. Notice they always put that in there. All sales are final for black folks, but it ain't all final for white folks. Amen. 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 All right. Then anyway, we'll see the offer now. That I'm, I'm just. Anyway, now, I, I'm just, it just bugs me how they're trying to make it as if we're ignorant of what's going on. Amen. Exactly. Ain't nobody, we know exactly what they, what's going on and what they're doing. But what we have to do now is never before. We're going to have to come and mass together and not try to run as individuals. There's unity. Where there's unity, there is strength. There is, there is something about numbers. So pray for us on Tuesday. We'll be marching uh, National Action Network, SELC, and the um, uh, Baptist Ministers Conference. Uh, we'll be in a march on Tuesday down if, if they don't stop us. But we march on Tuesday morning. And uh, this evening I'll be on radio broadcast uh, talking uh, to... Um, uh, the community uh, about it. I'll put it on the. Uh, I'll, I'll get it to you if you want it. But we got to talk about what's going on in our community because they're trying their best to move us out, take oh, yeah. it over, yeah. and, and and if they can't move us out, they're trying to kill us. It, right. it is, they're right. trying to exterminate us. I don't right. believe it, but that's what's going on. It is genocide. And another thing is, don't get fooled by them saying, well, you need to stop all this black-on-black -black crime. There's more black uh, white-on-white -white crime than it is black-on-black -black crime, statistically proven. And there are more white women that are killed in 
quite on white crimes in anything. Amen. Amen. Those Amen. are the numbers. That's the truth. Amen. All right. Everybody that have their offering, raise it toward heaven. Father, on this day, the birth of the church, we do thank you and we glorify you. Each gift and given. I'll take it, bless it, break it, multiply it up there tonight. Can you return it hundredfold in Jesus' name? Amen. All right. particular time in which it was written uh, the Holy Spirit had not fallen and it is an extension of writing from the uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John canonical Gospels. It is here that Jesus is still on the earth. Pentecost 50, the days uh, the days, 40 days and then the 10 days, 40 days after his resurrection without his resurrection, there would be no Pentecost. And while he stood there and had admonished and talked to them and with them, he was reminding them that there was going to be a day coming where the people of God would experience a whole new fire. And it was not going to be just for the priest alone, but everyone that believes could have some of this fire. Hello, somebody. He let them know that this is where there comes somewhat of a controversy about some people not believing that women should be able to proclaim the gospel. But in the book of Isaiah, it declared and said that in that day he would pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And he said, and your sons and daughters would prophesy. Then we come down to at the time of the great resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the first message from the grave was by a woman by the name of Mary Magdalene. He told them that there was going to be a time that you will go receive uh, power 
power when the Holy Spirit is come upon you. He said, you go get something that didn't nobody else have before you. David didn't have it. Amen. Moses didn't have it. Amen. Jeremiah thought he had it, but he got discouraged and said, I ain't going to preach no more. Amen. He said that this is going to be a fire like Jeremiah when he said, you know what? I said I wasn't going to say nothing in your name again. I, I, I saw what you did. You knew that you were stronger than me. And that's the only reason why I'm here. But he said, while well, sitting down, he said, you know, I thought of the goodness of the Lord and all that he had done. And it was like fire. Yeah. Shut up in my bones. Ah, eh? uh, yes. Amos didn't have it. Obadiah didn't have it. Job didn't have it. Ezekiel didn't have it. Daniel didn't have it. They all talked about it coming, but they didn't have it. But when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all sitting, 120 of them. I began to look statistically and said, after all the people that had followed Jesus, why only 120? But you know, it's in the small numbers that big things come out of. I wish I had a witness this morning. The Bible said, despise not the days of small things. Uh, when you go, if you've ever gone to Yosemite and through the Sequoia Mountains uh, and seen those big, huge redwood trees uh, that you're driving through, remember it started as a little acorn. But if you give it a little time, if you give it a little tenderness, if you give it a little care and consideration, big things uh, can come out of small little things. So they were there, 120 of them sitting up in a room. I'm pretty sure not much bigger or larger than this, but they were sitting there waiting on the promise, uh, waiting on something to come that they had never seen before, had never heard of before. But because Jesus said it was coming, uh, they sat there in anticipation. I wonder if you have ever gotten something from the Lord that didn't come immediately, but you still were anticipating because it was in the Word. I'm almost through. It's time now that we recognize that there's some things that are going to have to happen by way of process. You're going to have to wait on it. Whatever the doctor said, even though he's giving you medication, it's still a process you've got to go through for your healing and deliverance. They sat there. They sat there. But how did they sit there that was very important? It said while they were sitting there, they were with one accord and in one place. Some folk move too fast. And, and if you're moving too fast, you'll miss your blessing. Sometimes you've got to sit there and wait. It looks like everybody else is going on before you and ahead of you. But honey, I guarantee you, if you wait right there just a little while longer, I heard Isaiah when he said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like an eagle. I'm going home, y'all. I will run and not get weary. And if I can't run no more, I will walk and not faint. And while they were waiting, help me, Holy Spirit, while they were waiting, the Bible said that suddenly there was a sound that came from heaven. I used to sing the song years ago. I hear music in the air. Ah, there must be a God somewhere. And while they were sitting, I don't know if it was in the key of E. I don't know if it was in A flat. I don't know if it was in the F sharp. But they were sitting there and suddenly there was a sound that came from heaven. And it said it came like a rushing mighty wind. What kind of wind was it? I don't know. But I do know this one thing. That God does speak in the wind. Do I have a witness here? It was a strong wind that blew all night. The children of Israel 
was crossing the Red Sea. It just said it was a strong wind, but it didn't say where it came from. Job looked around and said there was a wind somewhere going on. I don't know which way it came from. It may have come from the north, the south, or the east, or the west. But all I know is this. You ain't never seen the wind. Tell me what color is the wind. I ain't never seen it.
glad I that we can have Pentecost every day. <laughs> Pentecost is every day. When he got you up this morning, that was Pentecost. He got you up yesterday morning, that was Pentecost. He got you up all last week, that was Pentecost. Because it was by his fire of love that he touched you and woke you up and started you on your way. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand of praise. The birth of the church. The birth of the church. That's why it's important and critical now. Even more than ever before. We don't allow the government to dictate what we do in our church. I wish I had a witness here now. In their constitution, they, they say separation of church and state, but then they told the church, shut your doors. And I understand for health and safety reasons, but I just don't believe every church ought to be closed. Hello, somebody. I don't believe every church ought to be closed. There got to be somewhere for people to be able to go and pray. Say, Lord, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. Thou wilt draw thyself from me where shall I go? There's got to be the church, and I know not the building. We are the church. We are the body of Christ. But oh, how good it is and how great it is when brothers come together. In unity. God bless you today, Lord. Keep you, may heaven shine his face upon you and give you peace. To so those who are watching my broadcast, we pray today that you have the fire. You're going to need to have something to carry you through in the days that are coming. There are difficult days, there are some hard days that are coming. We've been living and laying on the bed of luxury. The things are getting ready to change. And we have to be rooted and grounded in God and in his word in order to sustain ourselves through this period. God keep you as our prayer. May the Lord bless you real good. Man, we're going to receive an offering and then we're going to go home. Amen. Wherever you're going, please be careful out there. Um, yesterday, and, and coming back, for whatever reason, I came down uh, Los Angeles and Slauson. I was trying to get to Ralph's. And I don't know why they closed and locked the gates on the Slauson side. <laughs> so we had to all go and get out on the Crenshaw side. And I just had to stop, literally. I had to stop because they were riding through the parking lot like they was going through the Indy 500. And I'm like, you ain't got but two ways to get out and there's a line right there. <laughs> so I waited till all the crazy drivers got through and then I, I looked at the long line going down slots and I said, I'll go another way. And sometimes we have to do that. If you remember the Bible, when Jesus was born, and the, the wise men came, and they were going to go back and tell Herod what they had seen. The angel came and told them, it's dangerous going this way. And they went back another way. Sometimes you can't go down your regular route. Sometimes God tells you to go another way. Be safe in going another way. God bless you. God keep you. going to ask those that are giving, would you come now?
thank everyone, thank everyone that has been able to participate in the food, uh, the meal distribution. We want to thank you so very much. Uh, uh, it has been a blessing to uh, the community and to many people, and we pray even uh, that there will be seeds sown uh, to help build the ministry. We're praying for Sister Richmond's niece. She's in the hospital. Uh, Michelle Marie Turner. Michelle Marie. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, we call upon you right now to step into the corridors of the hospital room. Yes, Lord. Touch and heal right now. You know the condition. You know everything about it. Be the doctor in the sick room that she needs. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let us stand. We're going. Let the church say amen. Amen. amen.